Oh, a warm welcome. You're watching news tonight on Rajya Sabha Television, your one-stop uh, uh, prime time show for top stories from India and across the globe. I'm Ashwarya, and these are the headlines. India secures a big catch. A Christian Michel, middleman in the 3,600 crore Augusta Westland VVIP chopper deal case, to be extradited tonight will be arrested on arrival from Dubai and produced before Patiala House Court in Delhi. Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu calls for all-party meet on 10th of December. Meeting a day before winter session of Parliament will aim to build consensus for the smooth conduct of proceedings in the upper house. Less than 24 hours before campaigning ends in Rajasthan, Telangana, addressing poll rallies in Rajasthan, Prime Minister Modi says nation is bearing brunt of mistakes Congress committed in power. In Alwar, Congress President Rahul Gandhi accuses centre of neglecting youth. India and UAE sign currency swap pact to allow direct trade with rupee and dirham. MOU for Development Cooperation in Africa also signed after talks between Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj and UAE counterpart Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan. And a setback for Congress leaders Rahul and Sonia Gandhi. Supreme Court allows Income Tax Department to reassess tax for 2011 12 in connection with the National Herald case. Orders stay on action till 8th of January. The biggest story this evening in a major victory for the Indian investigating agencies, the Christian Michel, the alleged middleman in the VVIP chopper deal scam, is being extradited to India from the UAE. Michelle is wanted in India in connection with the 3,600 crore rupees Augusta Westland chopper scam. A British national, Christian Michel, was arrested in the UAE last year and was out on bail. Michel is scheduled to arrive in New Delhi late on Tuesday night on a private flight. He will be arrested on arrival and will be later produced at the Patiala House Court. The Enforcement Directorate had filed a charge sheet against Michel in June 2016, alleging that he had received a bribe of about 30 million euros or 225 crore rupees from Augusta Westland. Both the CBI and the ED had notified an Interpol red corner notice against him. On to some other news, Rajya Sabha Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu has called an all-party meeting on 10th of December, a day before the Parliament's winter session starts. The meeting will aim to build a consensus for the smooth conduct of proceedings in the upper house. Remember, the winter session will start on 11th of December and will conclude on 8th of January. It will have 20 working days, being the last full-fledged parliament session ahead of the general elections next year. The session is expected to be significant. The government will push for the passage of the Triple Talaq Bill pending in the Rajya Sabha. Vice President Naidu has expressed concern on several occasions over the deadlock between the ruling and the opposition sides. He has also made successful attempts to resolve the deadlock, enhancing the productivity of the House. Now let's get you all the action from the five election-bound states. With campaigning entering the last lap in Rajasthan, political parties are leaving no stone unturned to woo the voters. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today addressed several rallies in Rajasthan, urging them to re-elect the BJP government and criticising the Congress party. Prime Minister Modi said that the country was bearing the brunt of its lack of vision in several decisions that it made in the past decades. Take a look at this report. Addressing an election rally in Jaipur, Prime Minister Modi appreciated the performance of the Vasundhara Raji led government in the state. Targeting the Congress, he said it took them four generations to build 11 medical colleges in the state, which the Raji government did in five years. 
Prime Minister Modi urged the people to evaluate and decide if they want the country to be run like it has in the past 70 years. Bimaru Shabda Nikalata Bimaru Shabda Ye Hamara Rajasthan Us Bimaru Rajaki Ginti Mehata Tha Or Is Kelly Yegar Koi Doshi Hai To Ye Congress Ki Sasan Karne Ki Parampara Hai Mai Vasund Raji Ko Badhai Deta Kuno Ne Rajasthan Ko Bimaru Mein Se Bahar Nikala Or Rising Rajasthan Ka Roop De Diya और आज राजस्थान हिंदुस्तान की आर्थिक गतिविधि के महत्वपूर्ण राज्यों में से एक बन गया। At a rally in Hanumangarh, Prime Minister Modi said Pakistan could get Kartarpur only because of the lack of vision of then Congress leaders. गुरु नानक देव जी, उनकी कर्म भूमि, साधना भूमि, सेवा भूमि। करतारपुर साहब वो पाकिस्तान में चला गया थोड़ी सी समझदारी होती उस समय के नेताओं में थोड़ी सी संवेदनशीलता होती तीन किलोमीटर की दूरी पर हमारा करतारपुर हमसे बिखर न जाता हमें दूर नहीं कर देता at a rally in Seeker, the Prime Minister said the Congress is being wiped out. He urged people not to allow the party to gain power again in the state. Congress <laughs> राजस्थान के लोग भी कांग्रेस को भली भांति पहचान गए हैं राजस्थान का अगर भविष्य बदलना है राजस्थान के भविष्य को इसी गति से आगे बढ़ने देना है कांग्रेस का एक भी नुमाइंदा जीतना नहीं चाहिए भाई Calling Rajasthan the land of the brave the prime minister congratulated the Indian Navy on the Navy Day Rajasthan will go to polls on 7th December. Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. And Congress President Rahul Gandhi on Tuesday said that his party will waive off farmers' loan if voted to power. Addressing a rally in Alwar in Rajasthan, he promised to give bank loans to all the youth in the state. He said the Congress's Chief Minister would work for 18 hours a day for the youth and their employment. Rahul Gandhi also targeted the BJP over demonetization. He accused uh, the BJP of failing to deliver on its promises to create employment opportunities for the youth in the state. The Congress chief also addressed uh, several public meetings in Junjunu and in Udaipur districts. Remember, Rajasthan will go to polls on 7th of December. Rajasthan, in every district, you have something to do. Tourism, handicrafts, hero ka kaam. हर डिस्ट्रिक्ट में कुछ ना कुछ आपके पास ज्ञान है राजस्थान की सरकार शुरुआत करेगी बैंक के दरवाजे किसानों के लिए खोलेगी पहला कदम and repolling took place in uh, Ajasora polling station in uh, Twichong Assembly constituency of Mizoram on Tuesday. The repoll was ordered after technical snags were noticed in the electronic voting machines on the polling day, that is November 28th. Over 300 voters could not cast their vote in the polling station due to persistent snags. All right, so those uh, were all the election-related news. Let's uh, get to some other news now. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that narcotic smuggling is a major challenge for Indian intelligence. Addressing an event uh, marking the 61st Foundation Day of the Directorate of Revenue Intelligence, he said that India's positioning is such that arms smuggling is a major challenge. He further said that the onus is on the security and the intelligence agencies to check uh, arms smuggling to aid insurgents from India's neighbourhood. We are geographically located in an area where narcotic smuggling World over it's picked up and therefore we are in a region which is quite adversely impacted by it. 
and that also remains your major challenge. In the current geopolitical situation and considering our neighborhood, we have been on the receiving end of terrorism and therefore illegal smuggling of arms and ammunition, particularly to aid insurgents in various parts of the country, is still a trend. And therefore the onus lies both on our security agencies and our intelligence agencies, including the revenue investigative agencies, to actually make sure that the country is safe and secure. News from Jammu and Kashmir now. We are polling for the seventh phase of Panchayat elections in the state ended on Tuesday. The voting which began at 8 in the morning concluded at 2 p.m. And in this phase, there are 30 blocks from 15 districts of Jammu and Kashmir divisions who went to the polls. They include 14 blocks of six districts of the Jammu region and 16 blocks in nine districts of Kashmir. Voting took place in around 340 Sarpanch and nearly 1,800 Panch seats for which over 5,500 candidates are in the fray. 85 Sarpanch and 912 Panches have already been elected unopposed. The Panchayat elections in the state are being held in nine phases on a non-party basis. And on to the other top story, the Supreme Court allowed the Income Tax Department to reopen tax assessments of top Congress leaders Rahul and Sonia Gandhi for 2011-12 in connection with the National Herald case. The court, however, said that the reassessment can be taken only after the court hears Gandhi's petition against the Delhi High Court judgment that had allowed the tax probe. The apex court also said that it was not expressing any opinion on the merits of the pleas filed by Rahul and Sonia Gandhi in the case. The tax matter is related to the National Herald case in which the Congress leaders are also facing criminal proceedings. The matter has been posted for further hearing on 8th of January next year. And the Supreme Court has ordered the setting up of special courts in Bihar and Kerala to expedite the pending criminal cases against present and former MPs and MLAs. The two-judge bench also sought a compliance report from the Patiala and the Kerala High Courts by 14th of December. The top court has also sought details of the pending criminal cases against the lawmakers to enable the setting up of adequate number of special courts for trials. Now, this after the Supreme Court was informed that there were 4,122 criminal cases pending, some for over three decades against present and former members of parliament and legislative assemblies. On to some other news, Vice President M. Venkhaya Naidu on Tuesday called upon the state governments to partner with the centre in a true Team India spirit to build a new prosperous, inclusive New India. Naidu said this after laying the foundation stone for the integrated passenger terminal building at Vijaywara Airport in Andhra Pradesh. He also added political differences between parties must end with the focus that should be given to governance after assuming power. And without India, there are no states. Keeping that in mind, states and centre must work together and they must move together. Leaving the politics aside, they must join hands through systemic governance reforms and create a more inclusive society. Most of the multilateral institutions have forecast that India will grow at more than 7 plus percent in 18 and 19 and ahead of the major economies if you move in the same speed. Vice President M. I. Naidu also flagged off the direct flight service between Vijaywara and Singapore at the Vijaywara International Airport. Addressing the gathering, he said that new air connectivity will make Andhra Pradesh aviation gateway between India and Southeast Asia. He also appreciated the efforts of the state and the central government in facilitating the state with air connectivity under the Uran scheme. Now, the government of India is focusing on regional connectivity. Small, small airports are being upgraded because with a little investment, you can revive those airports. That is happening. I'm very happy that this scheme 
is catching up and then it's picking up across the country. Prasar Bharti Chairman A. Surya Prakash on Tuesday said that every television channel should act as a public service broadcaster in accommodating the views and aspirations of underprivileged sections of society. Addressing the gathering at a book release function in New Delhi, Prakash said that a part of the broadcast time of every television channel should be devoted to airing programs that are beneficial to the marginalized sections of the society. The book, named TRP Trick, How Television in India Was Hijacked, has been written by Dr. N. Bhaskar Rao, the chairman of a Center for Media Studies. About 40% of advertising in this country goes into television, which is huge money actually. And so TV is a major driver of corporate India and consumer goods, news. Um, in all this, the size of uh, the slice of the cake for news is just 7%. Earlier when I was with Z and so on, it was 4-5%. It has now moved up to about 7%. India and the United States have agreed to accelerate defense and national security ties. The agreement was reached during the meeting between Defense Minister Nirmala Sitharaman and her U.S. counterpart James Mattis in Washington. At the delegation-level meeting, Mattis asserted that the Trump administration sees no contradiction between strategic autonomy and strategic partnership. He reiterated U.S.'s appreciation for India's leadership as a stabilizing force in the pursuit of promoting peace and security across the region and the globe. Sitaraman asserted that New Delhi sees the U.S. as an important partner in the field of defense and that she was encouraged by the importance attached to the Indo-U.S. defense relationship in the new U.S. national security strategy. While this is Sitaraman's first trip to Washington, D.C., the two leaders have met four times in about a year. Sitaraman now travels to California to visit the Defense Innovation Unit of the Department of Defense and the Indo-Pacific Command Headquarters in Hawaii. And U.S. Defense Secretary James Mattis in a strong message to Pakistan has said that 40 years is enough for every responsible nation to get on board with the South Asia peace process. He said it is a time for everyone to support the efforts of the United Nations, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and Afghanistan in this regard. Mattis made the comments ahead of bilateral talks with the Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman in Washington. Mattis said that we are looking for every responsible nation to support a peace in the subcontinent and across this war in Afghanistan that has gone going on for 40 years. Mattis said that uh, this while responding to a question uh, from reporters about uh, the letter written by U.S. President Donald Trump to Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan, seeking his support in the peace process in Afghanistan. And in this letter, Donald Trump made it clear that Pakistan's full support in this regard is fundamental to building an enduring U.S.-Pakistan partnership. All right, let's get a perspective on U.S.-Pakistan relations. We have with us Mr. Shil Khan Sharma, former diplomat, joining us. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us here on Rajya Sabha Television. Sir, James Mattis has said that Pakistan must support the efforts to maintain peace in South Asia. So does this imply that the U.S. is uh, both putting pressure on Pakistan while also signaling that it stands with India on terror? Well, you know, uh, what uh, the Defense Secretary Mattis said after uh, leaving Pakistan or when he was visiting Pakistan uh, was a, a mild-mannered uh, diplomatic, uh, uh, you know, statement. But what he said in uh, Washington before meeting our Defense Minister, our yes. Chamantri, mm -hmm. is uh, much more uh, uh, in stark terms. And the letter which is quoted from uh, President Trump to Pakistani Prime Minister mm -hmm. also mentions this, that Pakistan's stopping of uh, terrorism and cooperation for stable peace uh, is fundamental. Yes. So these things are very clear that uh, American pressure on Pakistan to deliver on its long-held pledges that it will support uh, peace process and it will not allow its territory to be used by terrorists and militants. Mm -hmm. uh, 
it is high time that Pakistan delivers on these pledges. Yes. Again, you know, after the visit of uh, uh, Defense Secretary Mattis in Pakistan, mm -hmm. the Pakistani uh, government officials have maintained their old line that uh, Pakistan's uh, sacrifices have been uh, greater and uh, yes. they will, uh, they have not supported and they will not allow their territory to be used. Uh, Mm -hmm. But this, this they have said in the past as well. Right. So the main point is that the, these three demands of the U.S. that Pakistan soil should not, they should not be attacked on the Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. They should not give uh, refuge or shelter to the militants. Yes. And they should not allow attacks to uh, a, any other country. Right. Where it's implied clearly that India is getting cross-border terrorism from Pakistan. Mm-hmm. So, U.S. position and Indian position on the South Asia peace issues, mm -hmm. be that in Afghanistan or uh, in the India-Pakistan India situation, mm. are very close. Uh, both sides emphasize that terrorism cannot, uh, there should be zero tolerance and yes. Pakistan has to come forward mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in denying uh, its territory for any use for terrorism and not, uh, not supporting terrorists. Right. So, but so, Pakistan is not doing that. Exactly. So this is not the first time, you know, yes. that uh, U.S. has made such a strong uh, remarks against Pakistan. In fact, Donald Trump has uh, already made uh, many critical comments, even saying that it, you know, uh, it takes the U.S.'s money and it does nothing for it. Uh, so do you, how how do you think this criticism will play out? Uh, because we have a new government in Pakistan now. Because of the new government, the U.S. line is uh, put in more diplomatic uh, uh, terms, you know. It is not uh, that, uh, that stark as uh, the as a statement from President Trump you quoted uh, just now. Right. But the, the, uh, the content is strong. Content is the same that you better deliver. Yes. And that you have not done so far. Hmm. And Pakistanis cannot whitewash this, this message. Hmm. Uh, and the fact that Pakistan's sacrifices made have been acknowledged by the U.S., this mm. is what Pakistanis are saying. Right. Uh, the, the, we haven't yet come across, uh, uh, you know, this kind of a... Because all this can... What Pakistan is trying to do is that they are trying to project a certain milder attitude and the U.S. Uh, softening yes. as they are, to strengthen their case for the IMF loan, which they are going to go for which is what is required right and uh, for pakistan and the mm -hmm. chinese have also suggested that they they better take uh, a 6 billion dollar loan from the imf right now the imf mo loan is conditional to uh, many things mm. and if pakistan continues to harbor terrorism and mm. co continues to uh, you know throw spanners in the works uh, for the afghanistan peace process yes how can they they get uh, this kind of a loan absolutely so i think they are trying to show uh, to window dress mm -hmm. and and show this kind of a, a change in mood or change in tone but uh, the reality is very different mm -hmm. hafiz saeed's uh, mosque raids free in pakistan and he's the terrorist uh, declared by the un by the us there's yes. an award on uh, on capturing him killing mm -hmm. him so uh, this is the kind of a situation where uh, Pakistan cocks a snook at the, the global position on its role in terrorism right. and at the same time says they are, his, uh, Pakistan's uh, contribution is acknowledged. Hmm. This, is, uh, this is, uh, is the same element, it is, this is characteristic of Pakistan Absolutely. for last uh, uh, 20 years I was, or, or last 16 years ever since the 9-11 uh, uh, and the US action in Afghanistan started. Right, and interestingly, so, this is uh, coming at a time when the, you know, US Trump's uh, special envoy for Afghan priest uh, Zalmay Zakali has arrived in Pakistan, and uh, you know these previous visits have not uh, brought any concrete results. So US is uh, looking forward uh, for you know peace process uh, to bear some fruit. Uh, thank you so much, uh, sir, for that perspective on that entire story. Thank you so much. On to some other news now. India and the UAE on. Tuesday signed two agreements after External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj held a discussions with her counterpart Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nayan, and both the countries also decided to step up cooperation in areas like trade, 
security and defense. The first agreement is on the currency swap that allows both the countries to trade in their own currency at a predetermined exchange rate without bringing in a benchmark currency like the US dollar. And the second agreement will enable both the sides to undertake development projects in Africa. The agreement comes at a time when poor countries are falling into the trap of China for their development needs. The first country in this uh, project will be Ethiopia, where an IT excellence center will be opened with Indian expertise and UAE's funds. At the UAE-India Joint Commission meeting that Sushma Swaraj and UAE Foreign Minister Sheikh Abdullah co-chaired, both the leaders held discussions on cooperation in energy, security, trade, investment, space, defense, among others. This is the 12th session of the India-UAE Joint Commission meeting for economic and technical cooperation. That our cooperation in defense and security has grown in many fold. There is an intention to move towards co-production and both sides are committed to holding more joint exercises. And India is currently the second largest destination for UAE's crude oil exports. I am pleased with the UAE investing in strategic petroleum reserves in Magaluf and its intention to invest now in Bali. And along with the UAE Foreign Minister, Sushma Swaraj also later inaugurated Gandhi Zayed Digital Museum in Abu Dhabi to mark the celebrations of 150 years of Mahatma Gandhi's birth and centenary celebrations of the birth of Sheikh Zayed, founder of the modern UAE. She also interacted with the Indian community in Abu Dhabi. The UAE hosts a 3.3 million strong Indian community. And the nation observed a Navy Day on Tuesday. The day is uh, celebrated in honor of the Maritime Forces' role uh, during the war with Pakistan in 1971 when Indian warships attacked the Karachi port and successfully hurt Pakistan's operations in the western coast. The day is also celebrated to highlight the role that the Navy plays in securing the country's maritime borders during peacetime and carrying out humanitarian missions as well. President Ramnath Kovind in his message has said that the nation is proud of the Navy's commitment to protecting our maritime frontiers, securing our trade routes and providing assistance in times of humanitarian emergencies. Vice President M. Ankhya Naidu in his message also saluted the valor, commitment and patriotism of the Navy personnel in protecting the seas and the country. And Prime Minister Modi also extended greetings, saying that India is grateful to its Navy for protecting the nation and the commendable role it plays during disaster relief. And all the three service chiefs are paid homage at the Amar Jawan Jyoti at the India Gate in the national capital to mark the Navy Day. And that's it from me and the News Tonight team at the moment. Thanks so much for watching and good night.